Well, welcome back. And we are now on week 34, day one. And we're finishing up the story of the Babylonian exile, or the exile to Babylon is really how I should word that. And so here on day one, we're going to jump a couple places. We're going to finish up 2 Kings chapters 24 and 25. 2 Chronicles chapter 36 verses 1 through 21, and then we're going to skip ahead in Jeremiah to the final chapter 52, and then we'll come back and read the other ones. Well, in this instance, what we see is that 2 Kings ends with a summation of the last of the line of kings in the kingdom of southern kingdom of Judah, and how they... Um, fared out in terms of maybe grading them, if you will, good, bad, or otherwise. Well, there is no otherwise. Do you follow God or do you not follow God? And Jeremiah chapter 52 basically repeats this same information. What's interesting, though, is that in Second Chronicles, it takes a different look, if you will. It reminds us of uh, something that happened early on in the history of the Hebrew people. Listen to this specific uh, line, chapter 36, verse 21. The land enjoyed its Sabbath rest all the days of the desolation until 40 years were fulfilled. What is it talking about here? Well, we know that in the law given to Moses that we find in uh, the end of Exodus, in Leviticus, we see bits of it in Deuteronomy as well, that uh, there was supposed to be a Sabbath rest. We were supposed to take uh, the same day that God had taken to rest after his work of creation to rest in the Lord as well, to set aside a day in which we rested and we worshiped God. But then on top of that, there was also to be uh, a period of Sabbath rest every seven years where the land would be allowed to rest. They would, it would not be farmed. It would not be tilled. Uh, it would allow, be allowed to rest. Now, this is not un, uh, undifferent from uh, common and even modern day farming practices where different fields will be um, uh, tilled and crops will be grown for so many years and then they give it a year to be fallow so it allows an opportunity for it to be restored. Well, as part of this too, was also supposed to be what was known as the year of Jubilee in which people's debts were forgiven and things were restored back to the natural order in terms of how God intended it for all people. But the people of God, as we read through the entire Old Testament and the narrative up to this point, this has never happened. The people haven't taken these Sabbath years and they haven't celebrated the Jubilee because as is pretty much human nature, those who have don't want to give up what they've gotten, even though ultimately it wasn't theirs to begin with. And it was just a way and means of being able to help out those who didn't, who needed more or who needed some other help. And so what we found is a cycle that kept those in poverty in poverty. Ultimately, the scripture says, if, if we look at this from God's perspective, these 70 years of exile are the 70 years that the people should have been giving the land rest, that should have been giving the opportunity for things to be restored to God's order. If they weren't going to do it, God was going to make it possible. And so we have yet a different perspective on exile. In our own lives, do we take time out to rest, to uh, let down our burdens and not just relax for the sake of relaxing, but to be restored and renewed in our energy and our desire to follow God by worshiping God? Are we coming to worship? Are we participating in worship? Or do we just sit there and sort of mark that off as another to do on our list? God intended worship in the Sabbath to be an opportunity for us to rest so that we might be restored to God's way. What is our doing in this day and age? And do we need to take a new perspective on what it means to live in God's timing.